What happened to the internet last week? I'm Allie Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. This past week, Apple quietly announced the patch of a vulnerability used by mercenary backdoor provider Paragon using their Graphite software. The CVE the group took advantage of is CVE 2025-43200, which was originally published and patched in February of 2025. The formal Apple announcement was sparse as per usual. The announcement reads the following regarding the vulnerability. Impact. A logic issue existed when processing a maliciously crafted photo or video shared via an iCloud link. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals. Citizen Labs came out with a more detailed write-up about exactly what happened with this extremely sophisticated attack. The spyware was highly targeted. Users who had it used against them actually were notified by Apple of their infection. Citizen Labs highlights two journalists who were attacked and how exactly the Paragon software worked. This write-up of the information by Citizen Labs also links the use of the CVE to Paragon. A 9.3 CVSS vulnerability has been discovered, but how it works is actually quite novel. The vulnerability CVE 2025-32711 affects Microsoft 365 Copilot or the AI that exists per each Office 365 instance. Microsoft has already patched this vulnerability and does not require any interaction from the user or operator side. It's important to highlight that this vulnerability requires zero interaction or input from the user. The bypass occurs by sending a maliciously worded email to the receiving user. This email is then processed by M365 Pilot. Following through well-crafted image inclusion, as well as SharePoint endpoints and Microsoft Teams, information can be passed from the LLM to the attacker. One of the main guardrails deployed by Microsoft to prevent prompt injection attacks is XPIA, Cross Prompt Injection Attack Classifiers. Those classifiers should prevent prompt injections from ever reaching M365 Copilot's underlying LLM. Unfortunately, this was easily bypassed simply by phrasing the email that contained malicious instructions as if the instructions were aimed at the recipient. The email's contents never mentions AI, assistance, copilot, etc. to make sure that the XPIA classifiers don't detect the email as malicious. AI tooling is still quite under-tested in the scope of securing new features for teams to use. If you are an M365 user, what do you think about this vulnerability? Let me know in the comments. No, it wasn't poorly configured DNS that took down many major services last week, but instead some poorly configured feature flags and exception handling. Google has taken the blame for the major worldwide outage that occurred on June 12th, 2025. They published an incident response report that went over the failure chain that occurred that took down so many major services. On May 25th, 2025, a new feature was published to the Service Control, which handles policy checks for API endpoints. The new feature ended up bypassing checks to prevent triggering certain issues. But the new code did not have proper error handling, nor did it have feature flags to help offset issues. This all came to a point on June 12th when a new policy change was inserted globally with empty values that violated the new Service Control implementation, but didn't have any proper error handling. On June 12th, 2025, at around 10.45 a.m. PDT, a policy change was inserted into the regional spanner tables that service control uses for policies. Given the global nature of quota management, this metadata was replicated globally within seconds. This data policy contained unintended blank fields. Service control then regionally exercised quota checks on policies in each regional data store. This pulled in blank fields for this respective policy change and exercised the code path that hit the null pointer, causing the binaries to go into a crash loop. This occurred globally given each regional deployment. The outage affected almost all Google regions and almost all Google products. The Google site reliability team was able to find the issue within 25 minutes from start and had a temporary solution rolled out within 40 minutes. While the solution was rolled out quickly, extended downtime occurred due to recovery times per each Google service. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of June 12th, 2025. If you want to support the show, please head over to patreon.com threatwire.
If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending With Allie. Thank you so much for watching. And as per usual, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.